And it's pretty clear that food is a very, very critical area, one where we can talk to consumers and to citizens in a very interesting way to perhaps bring ecosystem services much more into their thinking about something that's part of their everyday life. So uh, I'd like to leave this slide up because then people who come from Europe can really see where they stand with the league tables so and see that some countries are not doing so well. Um, in the UK, they've done a huge amount of work on looking at supply chains. And of course, this is one of the fundamental flaws of the way that we deliver food onto the plate. And that is that we have a lot of waste on the farm, through the supply chain, and even by the time people buy food, um, and the way in which they then live their lives means that there's an awful lot of biodiversity, if you want to call it, but certainly ecosystem services that are sort of lost in a way. All that energy that's being taken out to create food is in a way <coughs> lost to, to many parts of the, of the, of the uh, ecosystem as a whole. And this is just what food waste looks like when it comes into the EU. So, in one sense, focusing on ways in which we can talk about biodiversity and ecosystem services through the lens of something like food is perhaps one aspect that we might want to think of in the future as we go forward. There are, of course, many tags that we can bring in to environment and health, and particularly human health, but also ecosystem health. And you know, we do do a good job in Europe at reducing emissions, but still, half 500 million um, lost days of work 250 million premature deaths, and there's still a huge amount of contamination and pollution within Europe that has a huge effect on humans. Sad to say that, of course, on the ecosystem side, we have less information, but we do have some indications still that practices within agriculture, for example, um, are, are really still putting a tremendous load on the whole of the ecological setting. And one of the things that we were thinking over the last year with the, with the Commission and with colleagues is that just as we've done a huge job on the carbon cycle, we do really now need to look at nitrogen in a much more explicit way as well. So I think that uh, we'll see some signs of that in the future. As far as climate change is concerned, we have very, very strong evidence that many of our ecosystems are under, I won't say stress, but certainly um, they're being challenged in the way that they have functionally operated in the past. Um, and of course on the global scale, you can see from Shamanism and others, that there are some of these big systemic risks that are not so far away from some of the things we experience. And within Europe, because we have specifically now have a, an Arctic policy, we have work in the Black Sea, through the Mediterranean, through the neighbourhood, we work directly with Russia, um, as I say, through the Arctic, we work with colleagues across the north and so on. Actually, Europe has a huge interest in many of these areas where risks are apparent. So again, having knowledge through the research programs and through some of the policies means that uh, we, in principle, are sitting on a number of issues that have to be uh, taken into the policy making world. So overall, I mean, you know, run, run through all those uh, various aspects in our reports, we would have to say again and again that the way that Europe is living is essentially not sustainable. We import nearly four-fifths of our materials across the borders of Europe building materials, raw earth, rare earths, emerging materials. So we have a huge dependency on the rest of the world for all of our resources. And whether we like it or not, those resources are either stockpiled, price sensitive, and so on. And therefore, the, the way in which we did will also become much, much more expensive. So looking inside Europe's borders and looking at what uh, Nick Stern did in terms of this report, and listening last night to how people understood the tea process had come about it, like stern report, we find ourselves then having a conversation around the green economy. And as Achim Steiner often says, we have a very good working definition of the green economy, by increasing um, well-being and social equity whilst reducing the potential impact on losses within the systems. <coughs> trying to explain that in a policy discussion then is, is extremely important, trying to find the right tags. Prosperity is always at the uppermost discussion uh, when we move to the Europe setting. And so, but again, excuse me for being slightly Eurocentric here, but, it, but it's important in a way to see this because the way that Europe will work, for example, on its discussions in re 